Look at this. It's a recent research paper on sleep, and although it doesn't seem like it, buried in these pages is a profound discovery. A discovery that surprised the doctors doing the research, a discovery that challenges widely held beliefs about sleep, and one that could have a massive effect on your life and life expectancy. If you've ever wondered if there's a simple way to feel less tired all the time, or boost your brain power, or how sleep affects your well-being, the answers are here. And today, we're going to explore them. If you go long enough without sleep, you'll die. But why? The answer to that question is something that doctors and scientists are only just beginning to figure out. But philosophers? Well, they were thinking about it thousands of years ago. Come with me back in time, because our relationship with sleep has a fascinating history. And not again. It's the 4th century BCE. The Aegean Sea glimmers under the moonlight, while lamplight flickers in the homes of philosophers like Alcmaeon and Aristotle. Alcmaeon suggests that sleep occurs when blood retreats from the body into the brain. Yeah, get off me! Which, as you'll see, is insightful. But it's Aristotle's ideas about sleep which are remarkable and resonate through the centuries. We'll come back to him. In the Middle Ages, a time not known for its scientific insight, nightmares are considered evidence of demonic possession. And some of the ideas around sleep, well, they're very different from ours. Stay at an inn in the Middle Ages, and you can't expect to sleep alone because Communal sleeping is the convention. There might be one, two, or three other people in your bed. Families all sleep in the same bed, with extended family members, servants, guests, and even strangers. Privacy is just not a concept. Now, obviously, I can't go back to the Middle Ages to show you what it was like. So I've come to Newcastle in the north, where in places like this, they still sleep 15 to a bed. Why? Scientists just don't know. I want to find out, so I'm going to ask some locals. So what does any of this have to do with this study, and how can it help you? Well, although medieval people were uninformed about most things compared to us, and had some very unusual customs, like trying animals for breaking the law, Guilty. They did get some things right about sleeping. Because they cared more about sleep than you. They went to bed at sunset, woke up for an hour at midnight, this was called the watch, went back to sleep and woke up at dawn ready for the day. It's called biphasic sleep and was a popular sleeping practice dating back thousands of years. Aristotle wrote about it and it went way back beyond him as well to the ancient Egyptians. So by the Middle Ages, we had sleep completely sorted. But then something came along and ruined our relationship with sleep. Actually, it was two things. Nothing lasts, does it? Artificial light was one thing. The other? The Industrial Revolution. Instead of working on a farm, artificial light and factory work meant that a worker would now start at about 5.30am, work until 9pm, maybe lose a couple of limbs during the day, and sleep for five to six hours, ready to go again the next day. At least I get weekends off. Seven days a week. Oh. So the Industrial Revolution changed work patterns, shortening sleep time and making it less flexible. But it did something else too. It changed social attitudes towards sleep. Instead of valuing it, we considered it an unproductive waste of time. Idiots. We put through a policy of purchasing council houses by their tenants. Here's someone that was famous for sleeping just four hours a night. Oh, and some other things. But that's what people aspire to, to get by on as little sleep as possible. So the attitudes from the Industrial Revolution infected the entire 20th century's ideas about sleep, and they still have an influence now. So if you have difficulty sleeping, you can blame the Industrial Revolution. Obviously, your phone, TV and video game addiction doesn't help. You should probably eat more healthily and get more exercise and practice sleep hygiene. But you can blame the Industrial Revolution. Do you get enough? Too little? Too much? Scientists used to think that sleep duration was the most important indicator of sleep health, which isn't much use if you have problems sleeping. For me, worrying about getting enough sleep just causes sleep anxiety. You can't control it. 
But this study shows there's something more important than duration, which you can control. Incidentally, six to eight hours is considered the optimal time sleeping. So what is it? What did this study find? Do you remember those medieval people that liked sharing beds? It was something that they naturally built into their lives. I don't know, if you think back to what their lives were like, whether that gives you a clue as to what it might be. And it's, and it's not bed sharing, that's not it. And it's so simple. And yet studies have shown that it can improve cardiovascular health. What else? Metabolic function, mental and cognitive function, immune function, and overall health. And I'm gonna tell you what it is in a second, but I'm worried that it's gonna be an anticlimax because it's such a simple thing to do. So here it is. Here is what the study found. It's sleep regularity. Basically, all you have to do is go to bed at the same time every night, including weekends. And that's the key. And that's where it can get difficult because as well as work disrupting your sleep patterns, thank you, Industrial Revolution, most people in industrial countries suffer from something called social jet lag, which is where your biological clock doesn't align with your social schedule. Basically, you stay out too late at weekends. Stop doing that and you can reap these health benefits. That's what the study says. I want to show you something that's quite terrifying. Just hold on a sec, it's just over there, I just need to get it. Right. Oh, sorry! Here it is. Now, it might not look terrifying, but there it is. Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. This was written in 2017, it sold lots of copies. But if you haven't read it and you're remotely interested in sleep, and let's face it, if you've made it this far through the video, then you must be, then I suggest you read it. But it is a frightening read because it spends a lot of time explaining the dangers of not sleeping. And they are quite ghastly. So if you want to know why we sleep, the importance of sleep, the dangers of not getting enough sleep, what happens when you're asleep, how sleep helps to rejuvenate the body, then I definitely recommend reading this book. I've put a link in the description and I think you'll like it. So why do we get tired? What happens in our bodies when we're asleep? And, and why is that good for us? I know a little bit about that now because I've read this book. Keep watching and I'll show you. It's 9 p.m. You've been awake since 7 a.m. and you're beginning to feel tired. Why? There are two main reasons. The first are your circadian rhythms. These are part of your body's internal clock. What affects them? External environmental factors, particularly light. It's getting dark outside. Melatonin starts flooding through your body. And whilst it doesn't make you sleepy, it puts you in a state of quiet wakefulness. It's preparing you for sleep. But that's not why you're feeling tired at 9 p.m. Your body has a second system and it's active all the time and it gradually builds up sleep pressure throughout the day. It's called sleep-wake homeostasis. Or is it homeostasis? As you go through the day, adenosine is building up in your brain and it's that that makes you tired. You're so tired, you can't make it through what you're watching on Netflix. It's rubbish anyway. So you drag yourself off to bed and fall asleep. You might be resting now, but inside your brain, things are just getting going. All the adenosine that built up during the day, that's getting cleared away. Cerebrospinal fluid washes in and clears out other metabolic waste which accumulates throughout the day, like beta amyloid plaques, which is a good thing because they're associated with Alzheimer's disease. And there's a lot more about to happen in your brain as you lie there covered in your own drawl. Your body is carrying out essential maintenance on your brain. It's regulated by the glymphatic system, which is like the waste management department of your brain. And as it gets to work, the space between your brain cells expands to allow for better cleaning access. After a full day of firing, your synapses, 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 are being returned to their normal state. Your brain's thinking system is being reset, crucial for neuroplasticity and the ability to learn new things. Slow wave sleep is allowing the brain to process and retain new information learned during the day. And you thought you were resting. Outside the brain, growth hormone is being released for tissue repair. The cardiovascular system's being rested. The endocrine and metabolic system supported. And repairs are carried out to the respiratory system. Getting sleep right can boost your brain power. And something else that can do that is Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is a learning platform. It's built for deeper understanding. It uses hands-on problem solving instead of lectures. This method is six times more effective. Lessons are made by experts from places like MIT, Caltech and Google. They know their stuff, and as you work through their problems, you'll gain a deep understanding of the topics. What's more useful than knowledge? It's problem solving, because that's knowledge in action. By solving problems with Brilliant, you'll build your critical thinking skills and become a better thinker. 
AI is one of the most exciting emerging technologies. How does it work? If you want to know, you can turn that curiosity into comprehension with the How LLMs Work course. Here you'll peek under the hood of large language models like ChatGPT to understand the processes involved to turn a query into an answer. To see just how far Brilliant could take you and to try it free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer or scan the QR code or just click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.